Hello, welcome to week four of this season's book group where we're reading The Greatest Secret. Today we're on to chapter five, Freedom of the Mind. And um, as you can guess, the chapter's around um, recognising the role of thought in our experience and the role of beliefs and, and how we're essentially creating our own reality, our own experience. And one of the ideas, um, which is an idea until you see it for yourself, is around um, thoughts being what create our suffering. So it's really easy to think that um, the world out there is the problem, that that person's a problem, that situation's a problem, that my suffering is caused by them, that my stress, my anxiety, my overwhelm is caused by those people, those situations, doing that, behaving in that way, saying those things, they are the problem. And that is our fundamental confusion. Because in that, we're believing our mind, we're believing our thoughts, we're believing whatever's running in that moment through this ticker tape of, of thinking. And, um, and I thought I'd borrow an analogy from the current Marvel movie, Shang-Chi, which is out just now, and um, my daughter, a big fan, we went to see it last weekend. And the father, um, he, he tells his kids, oh, by the way, if you've not seen the movie, <laughs> obviously don't listen to any more of this because uh, it will give away a whole bunch of plot. But basically the father, um, the, the mother died a number of years ago and the father gets the children back home and says, we have to go and rescue your mother. She's been captured by the people in the village where she originally came from and they've, um, they've locked her away in this, um, in this prison in the, in the mountains. And we have to go as a family. I can hear her voice. We have to go and rescue her. We have to bring our family back together and be happy together again. And um, yeah, so he he's, tells the kids, he's heard her voice already. He's, told, he's heard her calling to him. He's heard her saying, come and get me. Let's all be together. Let's, let's be connected again. And, um, and then during the movie, you kind of have him, you see him having these experiences of hearing his, his wife's voice, calling him, calling him, saying, come and get me, come and get me. So essentially in their separate ways, they get to the, the village where she grew up. And, um, and one of the elders tells the children, cause they get there first, that no, it's not the wife calling. It's this monster behind the, um, in this prison, it's a monster that's been trapped and kept, kept away. And it's done this a number of times where it's lured people in with the attraction of, of a story around, you know, there's somebody there that they love that they can come and find from behind the, um, behind the prison door. And so the same was happening with his father, the, the monsters luring him in with this, um, this projection of thought into his mind saying, come and get me, it's your wife, it's your wife, when all the time it's this soul sucking monster. And, um, and it just occurred to me how, gosh, well, that's just what happens all the time in life where the mind tells us a story and lures us in saying love and joy and connection is this way. Come and follow my story. Come and listen to what I'm telling you. Believe, believe what I'm telling you. And, and so we believe it and we follow it thinking we're going to find exactly what we want, exactly what we're looking for. But actually all it does is take us further and further into suffering and true for the father too he actually ended up dying as a result of releasing that soul-sucking monster um so hopefully that doesn't happen to all of us although it does to some like let's let's be really real about this you know for some people the lure of that story brings them in so so deep that they really believe it and they do kill themselves it's it's desperate and and your, our hearts go out to them because we see that they're suffering and we and we see there's it's like they've gone too far into the story they've gone too far to be brought back but the same for all of us in our in our day-to-day -day lives there really is a lure of that story where we think it's telling us the truth we think there's something beautiful at the end of it and there just isn't the beauty is the absence of thoughts the beauty is recognizing what we are prior to thoughts and then thoughts can do whatever we whatever they want. We don't need to follow them. We will follow some because that's how we're designed. And 
we find that we tend to then naturally follow the ones that are enlivening, joyful, connecting, that are creating beautiful things in the world. And we tend to stop paying attention to the ones that we can see are leading to suffering and upset and, and disconnection. And so really, really what we're looking for is not salvation in the lure of that thought story. We're looking to recognize that we are already safe. We are already okay. And then we see what thoughts we pay attention to. And we get to question each time, is that really the truth? Is that really something that I need to believe? Or is it actually a monster behind the prison wall trying to lure me in with its story? So I'd love to know what you hear in this and what you've experienced in your life. Let me know in the comments. Thanks very much. Bye.